Now I want to get one thing clear before we start. This video is not going to have any egg puns in it whatsoever. Just not going to do them. Hello and welcome YouTube viewers to the inaugural edition of Retrodom, which will be a recurring series of videos around the subject of retro gaming. I'm Dominoid and I'll be your host for a semi-regular look at electronic things from when we were all a little bit shorter. Now I'll begin this week with a little background to start with. I'm Dominoid, as I said I'm 27 years old, pushing 28 at the moment. I live in Plymouth. Now, my American cousins watching will probably be asking about now, but Dom, there are 22 states with a Plymouth in them, so which one are you in? Actually, no, I am in Plymouth on the south coast of England. Now, more astute amongst you will realise that that makes me, of course, British, and there is nothing more British than a lovely cup of tea. So, cheers, YouTube. Now, you'll learn more about me as time goes on. But this week, I'll be starting with a review. So, we'll begin by setting the scene a little. Picture this, if you will. It's 1988 and four-year-old little Dom gets his first experience with computers. Of course, he wasn't called Dom back then. He was just called Gary or Mummy's Little Biscuit, if you indeed are my mother. That's fairly unlikely as my mother doesn't even own a computer. But just in case anyone ever shows her this video, hi, Mum. Anyway, we've gone off the script a little. The point is that computer was an Amstrad CPC 464, very much like this one. Not actually this one though, of course. I bought this one on eBay. So anyway, at that age, I was exposed to such games as Time Man 1 that taught me how to tell the time from an analog clock and Animal Vegetable Mineral that taught me the basics of categorization. Now, these games were never gonna win any awards for gameplay, but th at that age, it was a TV screen that interacted with me and I was fascinated, that was all I needed. So time moved on and I discovered the more traditional non-educational games and then enjoyed such classics as Rockstar Ain't My Hamster, Spellbound and Count Duckula 2. But the greatest purchase that I ever made was buying a copy of Treasure Island Dizzy with half of my quite good for the time pound a week pocket money in 1990 from a car boot sale. This was then the start of what would become a long-standing love affair with Dizzy and that's never really waned since. It was somewhere between a platformer and a puzzle game and it was, as well as being a great game, it was also rock hard. The merest touch of an enemy or water would kill you. You only had three lives so you'd be back to the start all the time and you really did have to put some effort in. So I played for many hours that I put into this game before I finally managed to complete it and that just cemented the love that I had for the little leg. Uh, for those who don't know, I should probably point out at this stage that Dizzy is a egg with boxing gloves. He's been anthropomorphized and a permanent grin. And he's he's not as fast as Sonic. He's not as nimble as Mario, but he looks cute and he does little somersaults when he jumps. And let's face it, what else do you need from a game? So fast forward now to 2011, and in November, Codemasters released a trailer online that started doing the rounds on various retro gaming websites and Twitter accounts. It had an egg box in it, so we all knew what this meant. And the now not so little, but I'm just big boned honestly, it's nothing to do with all the beer and pizzas, honest, Dom got very excited. Um, a few days later, a further trailer arrived to announce that it wasn't a new game as I'd been hoping for, but in line with the fashionable trend of the moment, it was a portable HD remake of 1991's Dizzy Prince of the Yoke Folk. That was revealed early on in the trailer. A tense few moments followed watching the rest of the trailer, or at least as tense as moments can be when watching a trailer, because I was expecting this really to be an iOS-only remake, as so many of them are. 
um, this tense feeling then became joy when it was announced that it will be available on the App Store and also the Android Marketplace, which validated my decision to spunk a week's wages on an Android tablet recently. So I was pleased with that and started looking forward to this game a lot. So that brings us to today, and the game's now been out for four days. I bought it, completed it on two different devices, and now I'm here to tell you how it is. Uh, first of all, let me say that Prince of the Yoke Folk isn't necessarily my personal favourite of the Dizzy games. It was probably the shortest, it was definitely the easiest, and probably if, if I was to pick, I wouldn't have picked this as the first to be remade. That said, I don't feel that there was ever such a thing as a bad Dizzy platformer, so I was going to be happy whichever of the games was remade first. So, the first thing that I noticed in the trailer when they were advertising this was that there are arrows on the screen in all the screenshots. That worried me a little bit. That suggests that it's going to be touch screen only controls, and indeed it is. But I needn't have worried. I was actually quite surprised by the touch screen controls. I, it's not something I've ever got along with well at all. I find MAME to be completely unplayable without an external controller on the tablet, for example. But Dizzy does it really well, it's really well balanced, and the control supports multi-touch as well, so it's easy enough to run and jump if needs be. Also, I'm reliably informed, although I've not got a device to test this myself, that it supports the little joypad nub things on the Xperia Play phone. Um, don't have one of those phones, so I can't test that out. If anybody wants to mention anything about that in the comments, though, feel free to do so. Now, I mentioned running there, and uh, speaking of running, Dizzy actually can run now, and that's brilliant. That's something that was never present in the original games, and one of the things that used to be a little frustrating with the Dizzy games on the 8 bits, it was a little, there was a lot of backtracking to be done, so it was quite, he plodded along at a meandering pace, and it got a little bit choresome to go between locations. So what I used to do was bounce around the screen with the, the little somersault jump, like a kid that's had too much sugar, and in my head, that was totally quicker than walking. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, but it's what you do. It's like leaning around the corner in a racing game. Anyway, what happens now is that Dizzy builds up momentum, kind of like Sonic. So the longer that you walk, the faster it becomes. It's not Sonic speed, definitely, but it's certainly a welcome improvement, definitely faster than it was. They've made some other quite nice tweaks to the controls as well. So, for example, Dizzy now comes to a halt when he lands, whereas what he used to do before was land and then roll on for a little bit. So you could actually make a jump, but still roll off the edge of the platform, which used to be pretty annoying. And the other thing that he does is he now moves with moving platforms, whereas before you used to have to walk along with the platform and try and match speed with it. So it was kind of like being on some kind of weird travelator on an egg version of the Gladiators. Uh, that's gone now. Dizzy now moves with the platforms, and that's much better in my opinion. The storyline of the game has been kept pretty much intact. It's pretty much true to the original. It does seem a little lighter in the dialogue in some places, and the ending in particular seems to have received a bit of a cut down and a rewrite. Without wanting to give too much away, I did notice at least one character has been removed from the game. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't really detract from the game at all, so it's not particularly anything that I would be particularly worried about. Um, graphically, it's really, really nicely done. I, I was pretty impressed. It, there's a lot of attention to detail that's been put into the graphics. Um, personally, I would have liked to have seen an option to use the original 8-bit graphics, like we saw in the Monkey Island remakes last year. But that's just nitpicking. The new graphics are great. I don't miss the old blocky dizzy anywhere as near as much as I thought I would do. I do miss the old fluffles. I, I, they've changed the fluffle design. I don't see why Codemasters decided to do that. It's kind of something that looks a bit more like a teddy bear now. And I really liked the old purple design. It, again, it's not a game breaker, but I would have liked to have seen it. I think I'm just being critical for the sake of it here though. Um, the graphics overall are superb. It's definitely one of the best looking games that I've seen on an Android or iOS game. It's got a really strong cartoony feel and it, it keeps that sort of vivid, colourful look that you saw back in the day, especially the 16-bit versions. If you ever played the original games on the Amiga or the Atari, they're closer to those than what I was playing on the Amstrad when I was originally playing them. 
Dizzy Games always had some of the best sound found on the CPC, and that's one of the things that I've found across the board to be constantly excellent within most of Codemasters games. The new version of Dizzy doesn't disappoint there either. It does keep the original theme, but it's been made a bit more modern sounding. It does still sound a bit like a chip tune, but not so much so that newcomers to the world of Dizzy that never played on the old 8 bits would be left scratching their heads. Now, make no mistake as well, this isn't just a cash in on nostalgia. It really is. It's a reworking that seems to have been made to appeal to the masses as a whole. It does seem like Cove Masters is hoping to grab the attention of a whole new generation of gamers, as well as those of us that remember remember when Sega actually made consoles, when Sony just made TVs, and when punk musicians didn't advertise. As a package, it probably could be better. You pay £1.49 for the iPhone or the Android phone and tablet version. You pay £2.49 for the iPad version. Why that is, I'm not sure, but sorry iPad owners, you've got to pay, let's call it an arrogance tax. That is still though, a price in both cases lower than you paid for the original games back in the 80s and 90s on cassette, which were usually £2.99. So it's 50 pence cheaper than you paid back then with inflation. Yeah, that's not too bad. You do only get the game though. In the 80s, you had a tangible product. You could actually hold it in your hand. You had a cassette that you could use to take Duran Duran off the radio if you got bored of the game. And I think also we have come to expect a little bit more from remakes in this day and age. So some extra unlockables, things like artwork or making ofs, or even the original graphics as a, an unlockable bonus, would have been a nice little touch. As mobile games go, £1.49 isn't that cheap. It's not that expensive either, so it's somewhere in the mid-range price. And that is, though, for a game that can be completed in about 20 minutes, if you can remember all the puzzles from the first time round. So compare that to something like Angry Birds or World of Goo. It, they can take months of your life away. So on a pence per minute version, it's not quite as good value as some other games. Does that mean it's poor value? No, no, it's not. I, I think it's still pure unadulterated fun. And I really don't regret spending what is, after all, not much more than the cost of a cup of tea. So I think, overall, it has to be said, there are a few things that stop it from being perfect. But nonetheless, I really did think that this was a fine return to form from Dizzy. You can really, really tell that Codemasters put a lot of care and attention into this. And they really are making a serious stab here at rebooting the IP. That can only be a good thing, in my opinion. Prince of the Oak Folk is genuinely one of the best games that I've played on a mobile device. It was well worth all the excitement I felt. So hats off to Codemasters for living up to the expectations that I, I put on there were quite high. Well, I, I say hats off, I'm not wearing a hat. If I was wearing one, I'd take it off. I'm not, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to award Dizzy Prince of the Oak Folk a princely 9 out of 10, and there's one to put in the family album. Oh, all right, look, one pun. Okay, that's got to be better than most reviewers have managed. On that note, I will see you soon. Cheers, YouTube, and goodbye.